Have you guys ever had artwork that you've done and you don't really know what to do with it? And you're thinking, mm, I like comic books. I want to get into comics. What do I do? How do I get a comic book professional to look at your work? Here's where this video comes in. My name is Walden Wong and I'm a comic book artist for Marvel and DC Comics. I have a Patreon page. My Patreon is patreon.com slash art. And on there, there's different tiers. There's tiers of support as well as tiers for mentorship where artists can download some of my images and do some work, uh, download some files. And also when they're done or if you have any kind of uh, inking work, penciling work, uh, coloring work, any kind of work that you have and you want me to take a look at it, um, contact me on Patreon, uh, uh, subscribe to one of the tiers and that that's where this video comes in. So I have one patron that sent me some of his art and I'm gonna review it here for all of you to see. Because the more we learn from doing art and review and critiques, the more we learn and grow as an artist. So I got a piece right here, here, okay? And then I'm gonna review it for you right here. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so I have a patron who sent me some of these artwork that he's done. These are actually trading cards that he's got from the Joe Cooper School where he signed up for a course and Joe Cooper School sent him some trading cards and then he would draw on them and then he sent it to me to critique because uh, again, I have a Patreon page where there, you can show support by certain amounts and there's tiers where we have mentorship where I will look at the work and correct them and adjust them. So first image is Wolverine, second one is Dr. Octopus, and then the third one over here is the Incredible Hulk. Now we're going to take a look at Wolverine first. Now I noticed right away, on the between the two fins on Wolverine's hat, there's a little white line. That's called a halo, and a halo is two black areas. It's actually a white line that separates two black areas. Now if you're creating comic books and you're having a colorist who's going to color this part, the colorist is going to color the forehead right over here yellow. And when they select this area to do flatting, that yellow is going to travel up to this halo line. So when you're doing inking work or penciling work or any kind of work, you want to have that line separate. So what I would do is when I'm doing the inking work, I would just ink this part of Wolverine's head and then I would just have that halo inside that top fin. So now that halo will be here. So when the colorist colors it, this would be a black fin and he could paint this maybe a bluish color and then the yellow will be here. So that will be separate. Okay, I'm using blue. So when I'm done with this uh, art review and critique, I would just send back the original files have that I have here with the markup corrections. And then he would see right away all the difference in the blue colors. Okay. Now, uh, Wolverine's mouth, actually, the, all the, three of these drawings, I think they were drawn pretty well. I like how the forehead here, there's a nice uh, line weight, which is thick here, and it goes thin here, and then it gets thick here. So those are some nice line weights. Uh, with the drawing, penciling-wise, I would add a little bit of a shading on the inside of the mouth here, just so we can see like the other side of the face, and maybe a little bit of a darker line on the top of the mouth. So that gives it a little bit more depth in uh, Wolverine's uh, mouth. And right here, some of these halos, um, I would, I think this is kind of too thick over here. So I'm just gonna shorten this out. So when you're inking lines, usually the light source is coming from the top. Let me get a blue color. Light source is coming from the top. And because the light source is coming from the top, the top lines are a little bit thinner. The bottom lines are thicker, which, uh, Milton, uh, my, the, my patron who worked on this, which he made this pretty nice. So this is the nice thickness here on the chin, medium thickness, and then thinner here. With the nose, you see how that's thicker? And this is thicker, that's good. Also this part over here, that's thicker, and it goes thick, and it goes thin. So that's done very nicely. Some of these frown lines, I would give it a little bit of a line weight. Instead of just a dead line, try to give it a little bit of a bloopy line like that, just to give it more shape. Okay, so yeah, I like how the Wolverine is drawn. Now, Dr. Octopus, I like the uh, the lines. I do see, so for all you aspiring artists out there, you see these whiteouts? Yeah, I, I do see whiteouts and corrections, and that's okay, because once you're working in comic books and you're doing art for print, you can use as much whiteout as you want, and then when the book is printed, no one's going to know better that you, you just that you use the whiteout. If you do use whiteout, try to go back in there and correct some of those lines. So you see this blue B line over here? If you did use whiteout and you erase some of the lines, kind of go back in there with black ink 
and then fix fix that area right over here. So I'm going to go in here and fix this area, fix that area, so it's nice and smooth, so it doesn't look like there's a little bit of a mistake. So same with here, just complete that line, uh, and be very careful when you're inking lines. So so you don't want lines that are overlapping. You want to be you want to have your work as nice as possible. Another thing I notice is on the holding line. Holding line is the outline of a character. When I ink, I like that holding line to be fairly thick just to separate it. So with the hair here, I would have this line just a little bit thicker right over here. So I'm going to grab that blue color again. Let's use that blue. And then here, we're just going to make this a little bit thicker right over here. Okay. Uh, also, the bottom of the chin, I want that to be thicker. Now, this line right over here on the collar, this one's way too thick. Uh, your choice is to either make uh, them both the same thickness here or to make both sides the same thickness. Okay, either thin on both sides or thick on both sides. You want them to be, you want those to be symmetrical on both sides. Okay, also the glasses, one glass is the bottom of this is lower and this one's higher. You see how this pair of glasses, the bottom, is touching the nose? So you kind of want both sides to be the same, just for symmetry. Having symmetry just looks so much better. Okay, so there we go. Okay, and I would also make the bottom of the chin a little bit thicker, the whole bottom of the face. Once you make the bottom of the face thicker, that whole chin just pops out forward to you. And I like how this pair of glasses here is sticking out. Uh, if you had it stick out this way, more depth to the artwork. So I'm just going to have that thicken, uh, sticking out a little bit thicker on the bottom. Okay, now let's look at the Incredible Hulk. Incredible Hulk is pretty good. Now some of these lines, they're they're kind of crisscrossing into each other and then they're bleeding into each other. Sometimes when you're inking and the ink is not completely dry yet, there's a chance that you're drawing a line and then when you cross hatch that line, it'll drag some of that line over and make that thick. So what you want to do is when you're inking, you just ink all those lines in one direction first, work on another area, wait for those areas to dry, and then come back and then go back and do that. So that way you don't have any uh, ink bleeds like these blobs over here. Uh, just make sure and give it time to dry. Okay, the hook looks pretty good. The hair is kind of a little bit off. So when I'm making hair, I, I, I do like to have those hair kind of nice and clean. So what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna go over here and do some hair inking. So I'll just taper lines and then just give it some of these uh, white sheen lines like that and then go back on the other side and pull some of those lines here this way you have a nice sheen if you have curly hair just kind of draw in each hair by itself like that and then go back in there and just make some lines uh, darker and some lines thicker so it's a little bit neater don't just don't just go in there and just uh, do random lines also when you want to use white out try to have those white out lines more of a sharp uh, tip instead of a blunt like that so maybe go back in there with uh, uh, your black ink and just make those a little bit sharper like some of these are nice like when you have lines like this that are sharp that looks good but when it's kind of round like that it's a little bit off so i would go in there and just use black ink and then just make that a little bit sharper same with over here you don't want any hair lines uh to be kind of like the hair is here all of a sudden you have a white part over here when that's when that gets printed or a photocopy is made it, it will look kind of off it looks like there's a piece of hair that's just floating here you want that hair to just kind of finish off a little bit okay so there's that Okay, so, and also, I would like to have the top of the mouth, uh, this lip area, a little bit thicker. So if that's thicker, it would just pop that out a little bit more for it. And also the nose a little bit thicker as well over here. But the whole overall penciling part is pretty nice. Um, the inking part is a different uh, technique. I know Milton is a penciler, so I'm going in here and I'm critiquing some of the penciling and some of the inking as well. Uh, when I'm inking, for example, like the hooks, these hatch lines around the straights over here, I like inking and having those lines spaced evenly. Okay, not only spaced evenly, heading towards the same direction. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, if you're cross hatching, try to cross hatch and have those lines nicely parallel to each other. So when you do cross hatch, you have these nice diamond shapes, like these little diamond shapes in there, like right over here. So I'm just gonna save this one, file save, save this image so Milton will have this. And then let's look at the second one. 
Here's a second image that uh, Milton sent me. And these are headshots, and they do look really good. I mean, here's a McFarlane-style headshot of Spider-Man on the top right. And then on this side, we have uh, a Venom, which is pretty good. And the penciling part just looks pretty good to me. It just looks pretty good. But I would focus on some of the inking part. So just give some areas like a thickness here. And it goes thin and then the thickness there. And even on the teeth, I would go in there and make some lines thicker and thinner. For example, again, the light source is always coming from the top. The bottom one, we want to make that a little bit thicker. Okay. Now, again, some of you who are watching this are thinking, why, why aren't you using black? I'm using blue. So when I'm done with the critique, uh, I'm going to be uploading it to here as you're watching on YouTube. And then I'm going to send the original files to my patron who will get this. So all the blue areas that he sees is my markup. Because if I ink this in black, he won't be able to see uh, where I did the markups. So, so, so like here, right here, some of the teeth area, I would just make one side thicker and then one side thinner. Okay, nice job on a tongue where the tongue has a nice thickness on the bottom and it's thinner on top. But I would like you to work a little bit on smoothness. So here, when you're inking this line and you're going very slowly, there's a good chance that you're going to get a wobbly line. But if you ink that line quickly, you're going to get a smooth line. So right here, let me give you an example. Uh, I'm going to just ink it on uh, Venom, uh, Venom's eye. I'm going to ink this line very slowly. And even though I'm using uh, doing this digitally or if I was doing this by hand, that line will always be wobbly. But if you do it quickly, you're going to have a very smooth line. Okay, you control where you want the line to start and where you want it to end, and you ink that line. You'll be surprised how how um, accurate your hand is going to go to where it is. So you start here, you end here. You look at where you start that line, you ink that line. You go very quickly, just like uh, Venom's the side of the head. I want to end here. I want to start here. I'll ink that line, and I'll just go very quickly and very efficiently, and you get a nice smooth line. Okay, a little bit thicker here. Okay, yeah, so work on uh, the inky part, the smoothness of it, and it will look pretty good. Now, let's take a look at uh, Cyclops. Yeah, these are nicely done drawings here. Okay, uh, just a little bit darker here. Um, use templates. Don't be afraid to use templates. When I've, I've been inking for a very long time, and every time I see uh, round bits or any part that I can use templates or ruler, I would use a ruler. I know there's a lot of freehand going on here, and that's that's usually okay. There's nothing wrong with being freehand. But on curves, I would use a, a template. Now, these lines, they're, if these were tapered, they would be better. So instead of these, uh, for example, right here, instead of these wiggly lines, I would go in there and I would just ink in taper lines. So taper lines are pretty much little triangles that gives the illusion of a gray area. Okay, you can go in here with a brush and go, for example, let's see, let me make my brush a little larger. You can go very thin and just press into it and you create that taper line like that. Or you can just go in there and just kind of flick it out like that. Okay, so I'm doing this digitally, but with if you're doing this with a brush traditionally, or if you're using a crow quill or micron, for a micron, you can go in there and kind of mimic that brush look. So this brush uh, look is where, where it's thin and it's a sharp tip and it comes in there evenly. If you're going to use a micron, you can go in there and just draw these lines. I know uh, Milton, my patron, he's using a micron. And then you draw these lines like this and just go back in there. And just go back in there and just draw these little triangle tips like this. Just go back in there and build it. When I first started learning how to ink, uh, I didn't know how to use a brush first. I actually started using um, repeatograph pins. And I was trying to mimic that brush look without knowing that you know people use brushes to do this. So I'll just draw one line, one line, one line, one line here with a micron or with a quill. And just go back in there and just close them up. Fill it in. It's a little bit more work. Uh, if you use a brush, it's just a little bit quicker. But if you're using microns and you're comfortable with microns and uh, uh, quill nibs, that's that's what I would do. Because sometimes if you're using a quill nib and you're pressing down too hard, it would just um, the quill nib would break. So some of these lines I see Milton doing a double line, which is okay. There's a lot of artists, for example, um, they would do like here's a like an ink area, and then they would do all these uh, hatch lines over here. And instead of going in there and closing up all these lines to, to be a taper line, what they'll do is they'll add a double line there. So it creates an illusion of a dark area and then a gray area. 
and that's okay too. Okay, so some of these lines are a little bit too thick uh, for the face. Uh, what I like to do is I'll go in there and I'll start really thin first. So I go really thin. Okay, I'm just going to erase this part first so we can see what I do here. I'll go really thin. I'll space them further apart. And then as I have them closer, I'll go thicker. And then if you're using a micron or a quill, just go back and then just thicken up that line. You want to space them evenly and you also want to think about the negative space so here this space is much wider on this part and as you go into the black area that negative space that white space is going to close up and be thinner and thinner until it starts to disappear so that would be a, a good um, gray tone area so there's that okay uh, nice use of white out uh, just make sure that when you white something else you want those to be like a sharp tip there Okay, good job here. Nice lines on the webbing. Um, when I do inking on webbing, I use like a real, I use the finest uh, micro tips uh, to do the webbing. Yeah, but this is this is a nice McFarlane uh, uh, head over here. Now let's look at uh, uh, Human Torch right here. That's uh, Johnny Storm. And good lines, again, uh, I will uh, control the thickness of the lines. So I like rotating my artwork when I'm drawing just because my hand just moves better in one direction okay so here we want those to space evenly now when you're spacing them evenly try not to have these bigger thicker blunts here and you want to make sure your spacing line goes from the beginning all the way to the end if you have this part here you want to start this part with the same thickness you don't really want uh, this line to be thicker than this line over here. So I'm going to go in here and erase some of these lines. Let me make my brush bigger to erase some of those lines here. And then when I'm making it, I just want to make sure it's the same distance. Keep them nice and even, uh, nicely spaced. And then have all those lines go back in here and then reach the end, just like that. Now, another thing with uh, the head here, I like how you have these cross hatch lines uh, these hatch lines just make sure you complete those lines all the way to the back if you can if you're gonna go over a line that's okay just go back in there use white out and just white out that part or um, get a little post-it note uh, some artists will just grab a little bit a little bit of a post-it note I'm just gonna draw a post-it note there and then you ink these lines you can go over the post-it note and then later on just remove the post-it note and then you'll be nicely uh, inking that line over there so that's one trick with uh, inking with post-it post notes okay I like how you're trying to uh, add these little thicker lines here and that that works nicely just make sure that there's no crisscrossing lines over here there's a little bit too much uh, crisscrossing lines okay uh, right here the nostrils just fill those in and we grab my blue uh, ink fill those in a uh, nice job over here I will always make the top eye uh, the mouth lid always thicker not only the top but also the eyes the top eyelid will always be thicker regardless of what you're drawing or inking or penciling and then the top of the li uh, lip a little bit thicker there too okay at the bottom of the chin make that a little bit thicker right over here okay all the time uh, always assume that the light source is coming from the top okay now let's take a look at the other pieces so that's the human torch uh, I would also work on a little bit of the flames uh, give it some nice uh, line weights on the flames so I'm going in there and show you how I would do line weights I know right here it's just one line thickness if you can create uh, line weights with the flames it will look nicer I'm just gonna create some line weights right next to it so like this like that like that the more balance you have to your work nicer it looks okay like that so I'm just gonna follow some of the lines that you created thicker thinner thicker here thicker and you just whip it around like that okay and I'm just gonna ink a few lines uh, right over here for example the thicker see the more lines that you can create the more bloopiness the nicer it'll look it'll, it'll look like real flames okay so right here I'm just gonna do a few more because it's, it's just fun to create line weights. And then I'll do some on the inside here. And just whip it. And then sometimes you don't even need to connect connect that line weight. Just just go in there and have fun with it. Okay. Now let's, <clears throat> now let's look at this Spider-Man. 
So this is pretty good. Now the white ink, it broke up a little bit, which is okay if you're going for that effect. Um, if your whiteout doesn't really work that well, you can always go back in there twice and then fill in those lines a little bit nicer. And then just make it, make it a little bit thicker and then go back and then use black ink and then just fix that and then tighten it up a little bit more. Okay. Uh, again, line weights, try to make those lines as smooth as you can. So if I'm inking, I would adjust my line here. I would adjust the paper, turn the paper, and then I would ink that line as quick as I can. You see that smooth line? Uh, if you're using Photoshop uh, on the computer, there's something called the soothing. Uh, I'm going to point to it. So I'm just uh, inking with a line. The soothing, the higher the number you do it, the more smoother that line will go. Even, even if you go slow, it just helps you get that smooth line. But if you don't want to use it, you want to be more natural, just go quicker. Um, I rather uh, rely on my hand to be able to create that soft, smooth line than to rely on a computer source. Um, if you need it, it's there. But if you don't need it, it's better that you can go uh, ink that line on your own naturally. So there's uh, all these uh, lines. This, this one's very nice. This one's very good. I'm going to put a little little check mark there uh, because it just looks good. Good, good. Okay, uh, I'm going to save this one. File, save. And then we're going to look at the next one. So next one here, these are uh, half figures. Okay, so these figures, I, I thought... Um, Milton did a good job on them. I like this is right here. This is Mysterio. This is Mysterio right over here. This is a uh, is it the lizard? This is a Sandman, and this is Dr. Octopus. Dr. Octopus here. Now, quickly while looking at Dr. Octopus, I noticed that some of these uh, curves are kind of straight. I I do like when it's kind of arch like that. When it's kind of arch like this, it looks very good. But when it's straight, it looks flat. So what I would do is I would just give it a little bit of arch just to make it look, look a little bit better, like that. And then when I'm drawing or when I'm making some metal parts, like for example, uh, this is Dr. Octopus um, metal um, tentacles, I would add a little bit of shadow underneath. Not only will I add a shadow, I would add a line, I would skip some, add a line, skip another line, and create that. This gives an illusion that this is metal. Uh, so for example, Colossus would have the same effect. Uh, metal armor will have that. Uh, is, uh, if you're drawing Iron Man, he has that sheen. Iron Man will have that. A lot of artists, uh, they would use that approach and they would just draw that line. For example, if I had a metal canister and there's these sections, what you can do is you can just draw that line all the way across and then get in there and then use a whiteout and it just kind of like white out in between here. So this gives the illusion that it's a metal canister. So that's that's a nice effect there. Okay, so next we have, uh, let's see, uh, let's see. We, I would want to make sure you draw uh, Dr. Octopus' head, a, uh, the bottom of the neck a little bit thicker, just to give that uh, weight there. Okay, make that a little bit uh, thicker. Okay, um, good folds here. Uh, I like the way you draw the folds. Um, have some more folds around here. Okay, good job. Good job. Let me look at a uh, salmon. Good texture. Uh, nice little dots. Uh, foreshortening. Uh, this hand's bigger, so thick lines here. These are very nice. Okay, good. And these are stylized artwork, so that's pretty good. Uh, textures on the tail. So this this thumb here is a little bit too too long here. Uh, looking at the anatomy. So what I would want to do is I would move this thumb a little bit back. Okay, you don't have to move it now, but just for the future when you're drawing uh, figures, just make sure the hand is a little bit. Um, in proportion with one another. Okay, good job on this hand here. Okay, a um, little bit, the eye seems to be missing a little bit. I'm just going to go in here and fix the eye a little bit. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of white um, and keep the eye symmetrical uh, in the future. Just make sure they're both horizontally. So I'm just going to move that eye up a little bit like this. So that, that looks a little bit better. Okay, now let's look at uh, Mysterio, Mysterio looks nice, uh, that that detail. Okay, so when working on Mysterio, I know he has these uh, checkerboard uh, pattern in, like, across his chest. Um, I would contour. I see you doing a little bit of the contour here, but I would contour as much as I can around the shape of the figure. So each shape, it, it just gives it more form. 
like this. So I'm going to go here, here. If you don't want to draw the lines, and what you're doing here is you're separating the lines, and that looks very good. So on the right side, I'm just going to separate a few lines. Contour, contour. I'm using your same guidelines. Contour, contour the shape of the body, like this. Get to the leg, contour. Okay, just like when you're drawing Spider-Man's webbing, you want to contour against the body. And here, nice contour here. When it come here, just give it give it a little bit more of an extreme contour, and, and it will look nice. Okay, good job on the hands. This hit this finger. Will, I, I would make that a little bit longer over there. Uh, the middle finger is a, a little bit longer. Okay, good job on the contour here. Um, again, don't be afraid to use templates. Okay, if uh, if you don't have templates, maybe use a compass or Maybe get something round in the house to, to like draw that round part. Sometimes it's just nice uh, to have things as nice and round as you can. And then um, use rulers here. Uh, if you don't use ruler, uh, apply that rule that I mentioned earlier. Just just ink those lines really quickly so you can get those lines very straight. Okay. Okay. Now the f flames over here looks a little bit better compared to the flames that we looked at uh, earlier with the human torch. I do like that you're creating a little thicker line here and then thinner as you go further there. So that's pretty nice. But it's a little bit wobbly. So I would go in there and just do it quicker. Okay. Just ink those lines quicker. Uh, now, if you're using Micron, it's a little bit harder to create line weights with Micron because Micron is just like a, a flat tip line. So if I'm making with a Micron and I'm trying to create those line weights, I would still ink those lines quickly and now come back and just go back and make those lines a little bit, uh, little bit thicker and a little bit smoother. It does take a little bit of practice to be able to ink those lines uh, nicely uh, smooth and that's very important and what you're doing kind of inking. Uh, I do like the attention to detail where you ink the line and then you thought it was a little bit thicker and use white out. So it, it's good that you actually see what you're doing. So that that's a good sign. Okay, we're gonna look at uh, the rest of the figures. So we have good job on uh, Dr. Octopus. Good job on Salmon. I like Salmon. Uh, make sure when you're doing the line weights, if the line weight on the bottom of Salmon is this thick, you sure you want you you do want to make the uh, the hand line weight a little bit thicker. So this one's okay, but if the arm is that thick, then the hand needs to be thicker. Now, if you feel that the hand is a good thickness, then you need to go back in there and soften up some of the arm area. Remember, objects that are in front of you are the thickest, which is okay over here, but as you go back, it gets thinner and thinner. So this part is a little bit too thick. I'm just gonna go in here and just make it a little bit thinner like this. Just to match, just to match uh, this side over here. Okay. Okay. I like that hair texture over there. That's pretty nice. Uh, it kind of looks like a uh, Osborne from a uh, green, I uh, see green goblin or hop goblin. I, I like that texture over there. You okay, know, Spider Man. It, this one's a little bit tricky. I know you're trying to draw uh, Spider Man. Is a little bit uh, contorted. Uh, I'm going to show you how I draw figures. So when I'm drawing Spider-Man, I would start with the largest box. I'm going to sketch everything in first. So if I'm drawing Spider-Man, uh, let me create layers, new layer, and we call this the sketch layer, S-K-E-T-C-H, sketch. Okay, so let me open up my uh, layers. Okay, so here's, uh, this is too much stuff going on. Close this. Okay, windows. Layers. Okay, where's my layers? This, okay, let me find my layers. Here's my history. I, I want to keep that. Properties don't need. This we don't need. Learn we don't need. We go to Windows Layers. So I have my layers open. Here's my layers. I'm gonna create a sketch layer, and then I'm also gonna create a layer for drawing. Okay, drawing layer, okay. So now I have two layers. I'm doing this digitally on Photoshop. On my sketch layer, I'm just gonna draw a little bit lighter so you guys can see all my uh, sketching. And then uh, when I'm sketching, I'm gonna use like, a light blue ink. And then when I draw, I'm gonna use a dark blue ink. So when I'm drawing Spider-Man, let's just say I'm going to keep that same uh, pose. What I want to do is I'll, I'll sketch the body first. So I'm going to tilt the body. The body, I see that as a box like this. Okay. And then the waist, I'll just adjust the waist 
like this because the waist is uh, separated with the spine. So this this body is going this direction, and then this waist is going that direction. Okay, so we keep that in mind. Next thing I'll do, I'll sketch where I want the head to be. The head shouldn't be too far away from where the two shoulders are. So I'm just going to have this head right over here. Okay, and then naturally we're just going to have the shoulders on one shoulder on this side. We're going to see a partial circle, and then on this side we'll have this circle. Next, I'm going to find out where I want to put the knees are, where I want to put the knees. So I'm going to place Spider-Man's knee right over here. That's one knee. And then his other knee, I'm just going to place it right here. So here, I'm just creating the pose that I want for the character before I start uh, sketching everything out. Now, I want his arms to be going the same direction. Now, before I separate the arms, I'm going to find out where I want the elbows to be. Here's one elbow. I'm just going to put that elbow right here. And then the hand, I'm just going to place that hand right over here. Okay. And then the other hand. Right here, I'm just going to place that hand here. Now, this is everything I need to draw the rest of the figure. So here, I'm just going to connect my cylinder to that foot. Here's that foot right over here. And then I'm going to connect the arm. Here's one arm, and I'm sketching everything out like this. Now, the other uh, thigh, Spider-Man's uh, right thigh, I'll just connect that cylinder like this. And then we have his foot. His foot, we're going to have his foot maybe back here. I'm just going to have his foot like that. Okay, that just will make it look more dynamic. And then here's the, the leg here. And then this hand, we're just going to have it back here. So now we have this leg. We're going to have this leg connected right over there. Now this leg, when I draw this, I see that as a cylinder like this. Okay, so you're place, placing that cylinder here. This is called foreshortening. So when I draw, I have basic shapes. So I have the square, we have the triangle, circle, we have the triangle, and then we have a cylinder. Same thing, if you're drawing with uh, uh, objects, you're drawing boxes like this. You have the spear, you have the cone, you have the cylinder. The more you practice with these shapes and the more you be able to draw this, it will just look a uh, a little bit better, you get used to it. Now let's look at the other Spider-Man. I'm gonna sketch the other Spider-Man as well. I'm gonna sketch, uh, create the same pose that you have here. We have the body. I'm just gonna sketch that body as a rectangular box. This is the body. Now his waist is twisted a little bit. So I'm just gonna twist his waist like this. Okay, and then now I'm going to find where his head is. His head, again, I try to keep the head in between the two shoulders over here. Here's one shoulder, and then here's the other shoulder. I'm just going to draw that circle there. Now for the head, I'm just going to sketch that head right over here. Just keep that within the two shoulders. Otherwise, it just goes too far off. After that, I'm going to find out where I want the elbow to be. I'm going to create that elbow right over here, and then the hand right over here. Okay, and then I'll just connect those with cylinders. So here's a cylinder. I'm just going to place that cylinder right over here. Okay, and then here we're going to place this cylinder like that. The other arm, we have this hand. We're just going to create that hand with this big circle, and then we want to create some foreshortening. Foreshortening cylinder. Again, we have the cylinder here. We're going to create that cylinder right over here. This foreshortening right over here. So that, for, that cylinder goes here, and then here's this hand. Now we want his foot to be all the way to the front, but before we do the foot, we need to find out where the knees are. So this angle is a little bit off. What I would want to do is I'll place the knee a little bit higher. This round part is going to be the knee, and then this part will be the foot, like so. Okay. After I have that, then I connect the cylinders here, and then I connect the back cylinder there, like this. Okay. And then uh, Spider-Man's other leg, we're going to have his leg, maybe uh, this is a nice uh, different contorted uh, body. So that knee is going to be back over here. I'm just going to put this here and pay, place that thigh here. And then we're going to place that other foot right over here. Okay, like that. So now we have Spider-Man. I'm going to go in there and start drawing drawing this and we're going to use uh, black ink. Uh, let's go up on top. So here's Spider-Man's head. Spider-Man said, I'm going to draw this quickly, like that pose. I'm going to create the anatomy. I'm going to follow the anatomy and then draw all of that in. So here's the shoulder. Here's the arm. Always thicker arm towards the body. And then the forearm, as you go towards the hand, you want the hand to be a little bit smaller. And then we'll draw the fist like that. And then we have the chest. 
uh, the torso. Here's the rib cage. Here's the body. And then here's the thigh. Here's the knees. You like go in there, fill in that in, and then here's the foot like this, and then fill in the bottom part. And then we have the other thigh here, here. We're gonna create the knees. We're gonna draw this thigh like this, and then we have this foot here. And then the other hand, we're gonna create the hands. His hands are open like this, like this, a little bit here. And then we're just gonna create this hand right over there. Okay, so there's Spider-Man. So that's that's Spider-Man's pose over there. Now we're gonna work out the other Spider-Man. Okay, so this Spider-Man we're gonna create the draw the head. So now the the pose is a little bit better. Okay, so here's the arms here. We're gonna have this arm coming up here like this. We have the fingers. There's one finger. Here's this one, this one, and then this side. And then on the other side, the uh, body we draw a little bit of neck. Here is the shoulder. Okay, we have the fingers, one, two, three, four, and then the fifth finger, and then we have the hand, and then the foreshortening of the forearm. Okay, we're gonna have the chest right here. Okay, we have the waist, and then now I'm gonna draw the foot. Okay, there's the foot right over here, and then here is the knees. Have the knee come up a little bit. We have the side of the leg, and then we have this side of that. Uh, the the back leg can okay, make this little texture here. Here's the eyes. Okay, make this a little bit higher. Uh, let's fix the eyes a little bit. We want the eyes to be maybe a little bit lower, like this. Draw the head a little bit bigger. And then now the other leg, we just could have that other leg here, here, and we'll draw that whole leg. That that whole pose is a little bit um like contorted. Okay, here's the center. Here's the Spider-Man logo, and here's the rest. Okay, so that's that's how I will go about uh, figuring out a pose, just to make the anatomy a little bit better. Okay, so good job on this. Uh, I'm going to save all these files and send it back to my Patreon. Now, those of you who are interested in becoming one of my mentorship uh, programs, uh, just check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash I'll add links below the video description so you can check it out. Um, and once I do the art review and critique, I'll save this. And then the rest of the spine, you're just going to go in there and just draw more details. Just go in here and figure out where the center is, uh, where the, the the boots are, where the gloves are. Same with this one, uh, actually Black Spider-Man, you have this big logo here, you have all these little Spider-Man here. So there you have it, that's my art and review for one of my patrons. Again, check out my Patreon page, it's patreon.com slash art. And if you're interested in knowing more about me as a comic book artist, again, my name is Walden Wong and my website is waldenwongart.com. And the link is below the video description. And if there's any art supplies that you're interested in getting, uh, check out my video description below. Anything you order, I get a little bit of commission from that. So thank you very much for that. So for those of you who are interested in mentorship, check out my Patreon page. Again, uh, take care, keep trying, and the more you learn, the better you get. Bye-bye.